Francis Ford Coppola once said, I think movies and magic have always been very closely associated. The very first filmmakers were magicians. Hello, my name is Kylie Johnson, and I'm here today to introduce you to the wonderful world of cinema and one of the very first film producers, George A. Miles. Um, so since the early 1900s, cinema has been one of the biggest entertainment industries in the world. Um, it helps us see things in a different perspective and helps us escape our own reality for a short time. Um, it can also help us understand and see different cultures and places and people and just things that we would never be able to see without these type of movies. Um, movies do make an impact on every single person in a different way and we often don't stop and think about where it all came from and how it started. So to begin, I'd like to start with the history of cinema. Stop motion pictures first started in the 1890s when the Lumiere brothers first invented the camera and projector. So they built this and then produced their first film on December 8th, 1896, 1895 in Paris, France. This invention sparked the minds of thousands of people and led to a very big revolution of what we now know as movies. Um, production companies and film studios very quickly started popping up everywhere all around the world after the first production of the movie and the cinemas were becoming a very very big business for a lot of people. And after the first showing, a viewer in the crowd um, sparked an interest and had a vision for the true potential and creativity that he thought that these movies could reach and that man was George A. Miles. Um, he was born on December 8th in 1861 in Paris, France. Um, his whole life he had an interest in theater arts and he was a very, very creative person, which in school he studied stage design and puppetry, which later on led him to own a theater where he showed magic, illusionist, and puppetry. Um, when he first saw the showing of the Lumiere Brothers film, he immediately insisted on buying his own camera and projector, um, which he later on ended up building his own camera and projector. Um, and then he also, after building his equipment, came to the realization that he didn't know how to develop film and didn't have anyone around him that could develop a film for him. So he built everything he needed and then taught himself how to develop the film himself. So then the, he produced his first film on April 4th, 1896, a year after the Lumiere Brothers at the Robert Houdini Theater. Over the years, George A. Miles starred and directed in over 500 films throughout 1890 to 1913. He produced mainly fantasy and sci-fi movies and drama which consisted of special effects introducing a new world to an audience because special effects were not even thought of at that time. It really was just showing, being able to capture something and show it on a screen. And then he introduced many different things such as stop motion and exposure that are now very, very vital in filmmaking today. Um, for example, he directed his the very first sci-fi film, which was called A Trip to the Moon, it was based on a group of scientists that made this plan to go to the moon and kill a bunch of aliens. Um, so this movie is one of the main things that revolutionized the way that we make movies now and introduced many, many vital aspects of cinema, such as stop motion, exposure, jump cuts, and many different things that are very, very vital to filmmaking. And by 1913, he had then broke his contract with his filming company and then soon became bankrupt. Um, the article, His Life, George A. Miles, states that him and his wife continued to work at a toy and candy store for the rest of their life, where they basically lived the rest of their life. Um, then, in... 1913 he was tracked down by a writer that was interested in his story and his life and then he wrote an article about him where he gained a newfound fame again and everyone kind of 
re-found George Amulez, and then he was given a Legion of Honor medal, and then a free apartment where him and his granddaughter spent the rest of their lives and lived there together. And then 2011, Martin Scorsese produced Hugo. It is a movie about a orphan boy in the 1930s who lives in a train station and basically has to survive on his own while also trying to fix a machine that looks a lot like a boy that was left by his late father. So he's on this journey trying to figure out how to fix this machine and he meets a man who works in a candy and toy store in the train station where he lives. Um, then he later on realizes who George Amil is and all the mysteries and wonders of what his life was like when he first started the movies and what he did and everything. And then he later found new fame and everyone refound George Amilez again. And this movie has showed a small glimpse of George Amilez's life and has helped educate so many people on the origin of cinema. Thank you.